So I'm actually going to tell you ahead of time that the volume of this cone is 314 cubic centimeters, but I'm telling you the radius is five of the base and I'm asking you to tell me what the height is. So we kind of have to reverse engineer what the height is. Now, don't forget what the volume of a cone actually is because it's the same equation we're going to use. The volume is one third times pi times r squared times h. This is the same equation that we've used all along. So now what we need to do is actually put the information in. We know the volume is 314 cubic centimeters. We don't need to write the unit down. We'll just remember that we're working in centimeters. And then we have one third, and then we multiply by pi, but instead of just putting the symbol for pi, we're going to use two decimal places, 3.14. That's an approximation, of course. R squared is five squared because the radius is five and the height is the only thing left. And that's what we're trying to find, the height. Now we've labeled the height X, but we're gonna use the variable H because we, we know that that's the height, okay? So what do we have to do first? We say, well, 314 uh, is gonna be equal to, and what we'll do is we'll just write, uh, we can, you can write it any way you want, okay? But I'm gonna change it a little bit and say uh, 3.14 and then we have five squared, five times five, which is 25, multiply by 25. And then we're gonna multiply by H and we're gonna write the three on the bottom. So we're multiplying by a third. That's the same thing as just dividing by three, right? You can think of these numbers and this variable having being over one, over one, over one. And so we can multiply times the one and get this and the three times the one on the bottom to get this. Or you can think about it as multiplying by one third is the same thing as dividing by three. So this is the same exact thing. Now, why am I writing it like this? Because now I'm just gonna multiply 3.14 times 25. And when I do that, 3.14 times 25 is 78.5, but I still have to multiply by H right here. And then I'm still dividing by three. Now, how do we make any progress? I need to get rid of this three. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna multiply the right-hand side by three. And then when I do that, I'm gonna multiply the left-hand side by three. I'm doing that because I have a three in the top and in the bottom, and so I can cancel them. And so on the left-hand side, what's going to happen, let's go ahead and continue our solution over here. On the left-hand side, three times 314 is 942. And on the right-hand side, since the threes are gone, we just have 78.5 times H. 78.5 times H. Now, how do we solve for uh, H here? Well, we're multiplying here, so we're gonna divide 78.5, and we'll divide here 78.5. All right, so if you take 942 and divide it by 78.5 in the calculator, you'll find that that's equal to 12. These numbers cancel, and so all you have left is H, so H is 12. 12 what? Well, it's centimeters everywhere and cubic centimeters for the volume, so it's just 12 centimeters. That's what the answer is, and so the answer here is 12 centimeters. So notice that we just reverse engineered what we had to do. We go in and put in what we know, and then we, we use the rules of algebra to figure out how to reverse solve for the answer. I don't have to teach you that again and again and again because we've already learned how to solve equations. And so doing things like moving the three to the bottom and you know dividing here by, or multiplying by three to cancel the threes and then dividing by the 78.5, all of that comes from the rules of algebra, which we've already learned. All right. Problem number two. So again, I'm giving you the volume here, but instead of asking you for the height, I'm gonna ask you instead for the radius, and that's gonna require us to do a little bit of thinking, right? Because the volume of any uh, cone here is one third times pi times r squared, again, times h. So let's put in what we know. 47.1 cubic millimeters. 47.1 goes in for the volume. The one third stays here. Then I have pi and then r squared, now I'm trying to find the radius. I'm gonna leave the variable as r because it's just easier for me to work with. You could put x here if you wanna put it in there. And then times the height, which is five. All right, so what are we gonna do next? I'm gonna write this as the following. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move the three on the bottom because multiplying by a third is the same as dividing by three. So I'm gonna write it as pi uh, times r squared times five and I'm just gonna divide by three. It's exactly the same thing, right? So here what I'm gonna do is, again, instead of pi, I'm gonna to begin to substitute in a little bit. I'm gonna say that this is 3.14, right? I'm just rounding to two decimal positions. So 47.1. Now, I'm multiplying everything, so I can just multiply the numbers. 3.14 times five works out to 15.7. 
and then you still have the r squared on the top and you still have the three on the bottom. So 15.7 and then times r squared divided by three. So how do we make progress? We need to get rid of the three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both sides by three and if we multiply the right, we have to multiply the left by three as well. Now what does that do? On the right hand side, the threes are gonna cancel which is exactly what I wanted it to do, and we will continue the solution up here. So three times 47.1 works out to 141.3, and that's equal to, see the threes are gone, it's just equal to 15.7 times r squared. 15.7 r squared. Now, how do we get a little closer to the answer? We wanna get rid of this number, but it's multiplied, so we do the opposite. We divide by 15.7. We have to do it to both sides. Right Now, on the left-hand side, if you have 141.3 divided by 15.7, run that through a calculator, you just get nine. On the right-hand side, these numbers cancel and you'll just have r squared. And now you can see how easy everything's gonna become because we have r squared is equal to nine. How do I get rid of the square here? I have a square, I get rid of it with the square root on both sides and I have to add my plus or minus n as we always do when we add our own radical. Square root cancels with the square. And you will be left with the variable r is equal to the square root of nine, which is three. And we're gonna throw away the negative one because we don't have uh, negative units of length. We're gonna say that the radius is equal to three. Three what? Well, all the units are in millimeters, so it's three millimeters. Millimeters. Three millimeters. So you see, there's a little more work here than in the last lesson. In the last lesson, I'm just telling you to calculate the volume over and over again. You just multiply or divide or whatever and you get it. Here we have to do more thinking. We have to use our knowledge of equations. We put the numbers in and we say, okay, well, how do I get this variable by itself? So I rewrite it like this. You don't have to do this, but I do it because it helps me visualize what I wanna do. Now multiply the numbers there, then I multiply by three to get rid of it, and then I'm gonna divide by the 15.7 to get rid of it, and then I have to take the square root of both sides. So very important that you know how to do that. Let's move on to the next problem. We're halfway home, we only have two more problems. I'm gonna give you a volume 15.70, or I'm sorry, 1,570 cubic meters. This is a gigantic cone. Uh, and I want you to tell me the radius. Again, I'm giving you the height and I want you to tell me the radius. So the volume of any cone is one third pi r squared times h. So now we will put the numbers in. The volume is 1,570. And then I have, uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing by, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite it as I do it. I'm gonna put the three on the bottom as division. So I'll have 3.14, that's the pi. The r squared is what I'm trying to find. So I'm gonna put r squared. The height is given as 15. So I'm gonna put that in place. And then I'm just gonna divide the whole thing by three. So instead of multiplying by a third, I'm gonna to choose to write it like this. It just helps me visualize the cancellation, but you can do it however you wish. All right, now I can do it the same kind of way. You know, multiply the 15 times this, but then I notice I have a 15 on the top and a three on the bottom. So I can kind of pre-simplify. I can divide both of these by three. Remember, everything's multiplied on the top and then you just have what's on the bottom. So I'm free to pre-simplify. So three divided by three is one and 15 divided by three is five. So now I have smaller numbers to deal with, which can be helpful. So what I have here is over here on the left, 1,570. On the right, I have 3.14 now times five, which works out to 15.7. Right, And then I still have to multiply by the r squared. And on the bottom, I just have a one, so I don't need to really put that in place at all. Now, I want to solve for r, so I need to get rid of this number. I'll divide by 15.7. I'll divide here by 15.7. So when you take 1,570 and divide by 15.7, you'll get exactly 100. On the right, these numbers will cancel and you'll be left with r squared. So let's continue our solution over here. We'll flip it around. R squared is equal to 100. How do I solve for this? Well, I have a square on the variable, so I'm gonna undo it with a square root. I have to do it to both sides and add my little plus minus. The square root will cancel with the square, and I will be left with the radius is equal to 10 because the square root of 100 is 10, and I'm only keeping the positive answer. The negative answer doesn't have any meaning. The units here are in meters, so it's 10 meters, 10 meters. Hopefully, over a period of time, you get the hang of this, right? It's kind of like you just have to practice it. It's like nobody is gonna be you know, painting a masterpiece the first time. If I tried to paint something, it would be terrible because I'm a terrible artist. But maybe if I practice for a few years, I'd be okay. 
right? So the same thing with math. You can't look at the stuff the first time and be like, bingo, bingo, I know, I know what I'm doing. I mean, you have to practice it. Unless you're just a, a true genius and just have a true gift, which I'm, I'm not one of those people. You have to. Now, I do have one more, and the last problem is of a very different type. So I do want to conquer that. I want you to make sure and watch that one. So I need to take one of these down and we'll solve our very last problem. All right, here, our very last problem. Now, this one is quite different. In this case, I'm asking you to find the volume. So I am just asking you for the volume. But notice I give you the radius of the base and I give you the height of the cone, but I do not give you the vertical height here. I give you the slanted height along the slanted side. This looks very different than the other problems where you have a height which goes from the tippy top straight down perpendicular to the base. That is the height H in the volume of a cone. So the height has always been from the very top straight down perpendicular in the center of the base. That is the height that has to go into the volume uh, equation for the cone. But I don't give you that. I give you this other height, which is longer than this one here. Or you can just tell that this is a longer distance than this one. So what do you do? A lot of students just, uh, well, at least me when I was younger, I would just lock up. I would say, well, I don't know. You, you told me uh, the equation, one third pi r squared h. And so either I wouldn't do it because I don't know how, or I would just put uh, this value of h in there and I would get the wrong answer. So you know in your mind that the height that you need to use in that equation is not the height given to you. You know this. So therefore, you must be able to find the height, the proper height, from other knowledge somehow. You have to know yourself that I am given the wrong height, that's number one, and then you must start thinking, how can I find the correct height? Because I have to have that one to use that volume equation. If you dump this into the volume equation, you're going to get the wrong answer. Because the volume equation is, the volume is one third pi r squared times height h. If you put 10 in here for h, you will get the wrong answer because this h is always the one here, straight down. So we need to think a bit. So we, we think about this and we say, well, if you kind of like forget for a second that this is a cone and just kind of like look at what I'm given here, I have a triangle here, right? If I kind of like stand back from the cone and just pretend that it's not a three dimensional shape, really, if I look at the profile, I'm, I have like a right triangle right here. And I'm told that this side is 10, and I'm told that this side is six, and I'm told that this is a 90 degree angle, but I know that I have to have the vertical height to the center to solve the problem and find the volume. What do I do? Is there a way that I can do that? And the answer is, of course there is. You already know how to use the Pythagorean theorem. This is a right triangle. You could say this is A and this is B and this is C, right? And you know that A squared plus B squared it's got to equal c squared for any right triangle. And this is always a right triangle because when you draw something down, notice the uh, 90 degree angle is in the figure. So we put in six for a, six squared, then we have b squared, and then we have 10 for c. And we should be able to find b, which is really the height of this thing, which is what we need to solve this problem. So six times six is 36, and we have plus b, and then we have b squared, sorry, and then we have 100 because 10 times 10 is 100. All right, now you've done enough Pythagorean theorem problems to know how to do this. We're gonna subtract 36 from both sides. On the left, we're just gonna be left with a b squared. On the right, we're gonna have 36, I'm sorry, 100 minus 36, which is gonna give us 64. All I did was subtract 36 from the left, giving zero, subtract 36 from the right, giving this. Now that we have this in place, how do we find this? We take the square root of both sides. Now we have a plus minus, but we'll ignore the negative answer. It doesn't mean anything. And what we will have is b is equal to 8, because 8 times 8 is 64. This means that if I go back to the figure, we now know that this is 8 centimeters. Now this 8 centimeters was not given to us in the drawing, but we were able to find it by other means. This is the most important skill you will learn ever in math and science. When you get to physics, and you get to chemistry, and you get to calculus, and you get to engineering, and you get to science, the problems will not give you all the information you need to solve it, but you will be able to use what's given to find something else which you need to find the answer to the problem. And that is the hardest thing to get through your thick head when you're younger like I was and I would just get stuck because I didn't know what to do. I, I don't know, you, did, you didn't give me what I need. Well, you have to find what you need. That is real life. You always have to find what you need to solve real problems. When you invent anything, you have to figure it out. So here we use the Pythagorean theorem to find what we need. And now we know that we can find the answer because we will have pi, which is 3.14. The radius was six. 
so six squared. The height we now know is eight, so the eight goes here, and all of this is divided by three, because multiplying by a third is the same as dividing by three. All right, so the volume is 3.14. Then we have six times six is 36. Then we have times eight, and we're dividing the whole thing by three. Now we can dump this in a calculator, there's no problem, but we also notice we have a 36 and a three. We can pre-simplify. Three divided by three is one, 36 divided by three is 12. So that's going to be a little simpler because then when we put it into a calculator, you just take 12 times eight and then take that answer and times 3.14, dividing by one's not gonna do anything. And so what you're going to get is 301.44. And the units we were talking about were in centimeters, so this is in cubic centimeters. 301.44. 301.44 cubic centimeters. All right. Again, I, I cannot stress how important it is for you to know when you for you to know that you don't have enough to do what you need to do, and then to say, okay, let me find what I need. And let me rack my brain and see, how do I find what I need in order to get the thing I need in order to get the answer? Sometimes it's a multi-step thing. And that's what we had here. I'd like you to solve all of these problems yourself. Make sure you understand how we did them. And then follow me on to the next lesson. We're gonna trans, uh, transition from working with cylinders and cones, which we've done so far, into working with spheres. You know, spheres like planet Earth. And we're gonna do that in the very next lesson. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.